Hey everybody, it's Friday. It's the 10th of January, I think. And um, what's on my mind today? Well, <clears throat> if I had known um, soon enough, I would have made a video and announced that the band, I, I can't call it my band because, but I'm in this band, in Dreama. You know, it's really, Dreama is the incarnation of the leader of the band, Nick Fackler. And when we play live, we're in Dreama. Anyway, I put this record out on my label. I was talking about it recently. But uh, Nick, you know, he signed a deal with Team Love Records, which I'm not a part of. Um, but like, so they're, you know, like, you know, they publish his music and they're pushing it. So they got him, um, one of the songs off of here, they got it um, licensed or whatever you call it for a use on Parenthood, the TV show, which was on last night. Now, I don't watch regular TV and um, for good reason. I did watch and tape the show last night. Um, they used the song um, Sad Reunion at the very end of the show. It's one of the tracks that I don't play on, on the album, but I'm, it's really exciting um, to hear music that you're a part of um, in mainstream media. Um, I'm just going to like uh, pull it up here on my um, laptop. But uh, yeah, I was the show uh, uh, Parenthood. Frankly, um, there was a lot about the show Parenthood that I really didn't... That It's like, no wonder I don't watch TV. There's so much about mainstream thinking that I think is just awful. Like for example, in this in this episode, there's several situations where the parents are just openly talking about trying to fix things for their kids. I'll tell you what, you know, um, I'm awake enough to see the consequences of trying to fix things for your children. It's been horrible, the results. So you can't hear it here, but this is the scene at the end of the with Craig T. Nelson and his granddaughter. And this is where they use um, really Nick's song, Sad Reunion. And I'm really happy for Nick because he made some money. I didn't make any money because I didn't write the song. So I didn't get any publishing. But I'm really proud um, to be a part of that. And hopefully this will help me on a business side. With that in mind, I'm actually, in, in, in a perverse way, really proud of myself because people are leaving me comments recently where they're saying, well, well, I had no idea you were a musician. And that pleases me in a sense because I refuse to do what people, what is done blindly, which is to just always be trying to sell something. That's, to me, that's not what life is about. I keep saying it, I need money to live, but that's not my focus. So, no, I'm not always here trying to sell you something, but I got stuff to sell. I got a record label. This is sold out through me. You can find this in record stores, but I sold out. I've still got records of my music um, for sale. And uh, hopefully next week I'll be announcing to you uh, pre-orders um, opening up for my next record, which I'm really excited about because it is. It's this new... Um, and it's not new for me, but the realization of the music is new because of the software. I'm able to realize my music much better now than I was in the past. Um, and so this next record, Flyover, I'm real excited. It's, it's just really much better than anything I've put out um, so far for, for me. It's coming up. But I wanted to share that, that um, Chuffed, you know, I, you can probably... If you really want to see the, the show, you can probably find it online or satellite. I don't know how y'all do that. But, uh, yeah, I put this out on my label. Proud, 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 proud. Um, yesterday, uh, uh, Amiri Baraka, famous poet, um, passed away. He was a major inspiration to my sister and I when we were young. Matter of fact, it was his writings that led my sister to joining the Black Panthers. And, you know, really, she... Uh, was very pushy <laughs> in getting me to to uh, come around I learned a lot as a result it was traumatic though it was but I want to give love to Amiri Baraka he never backed down and when he just came out and, and wrote the poem who blew up America 
and people still want to... Anyway, I, w I can't prove a thing, so you guys that want to get up and argue about shit, just... I don't want to argue with you. To me, again, I'm just going to say it really bluntly, this is my perspective. But to me, it's very clear that this country has, has been is being destroyed from the inside. Very clear to me. I, I don't... That's my experience, and that's why skeptics and doubters, I don't particularly... I love you as people, but I don't particularly care what you have to say. I'm, call, I'm going from experience my entire life. So, so people that want to argue and debate, I'm not going to debate what I've experienced, okay, and what I continue to experience, okay? No diss to you, the doubters, just that I will not have others tell me what reality is. Which brings me to another uh, video or a couple videos I absorbed yesterday. Thank you, Seca Funk Fan, Van, for pointing me to the KRS KRS One interviews. KRS One of Boogie Down Productions, one of the most um, intelligent minds in hip hop that I've ever heard. A couple of really excellent interviews, um, and the way that he put his perspective on the origins of what we call hip hop. I'm definitely hip hop, definitely. You know, what I'm saying. Matter of fact, I'm hip hop to an extreme because I'm doing it in a very unique way. Another thing about what he was talking about is I'm fully aware of the colonialism that has populated this world and tried to make it, you know, the white man's domain. And I'm well aware of that and I'm well aware of the, um, how that's just been, that's wrong, it's just wrong. And they, try, and they try to make it like conquest, so that was a good thing, look what we brought. It was wrong. I like the music. And the other thing that saves me is, the reason why I don't get on a big black white thing here is because I'm past that. I'm a universalist. I know that everyone, every human is my brother and sister. But I'll say this. It is absolutely essential for black people and black, young black men to be made aware and want to know their history and the roots because a lot of a lot of the stunning achievements in history have come through black people. That's not a diss on white. What it is a diss on is how um, historically um, the history has been robbed from us and tainted and, and as a result uh, life really sucks. That's why I go on like this because all this conquest just continues to lead to conquest. It has not led to peace. It just keeps leading to more conquest and fighting and division. With that in mind, I'm not talking too much about music, folks, but you know i got to talk my, my, my mind. Lately, I have been speaking up more when I watch videos um, and addressing people who come back with negative responses. You know, there's all kinds of people in the world, and there's all kinds of reasons why people are disagreeable. But one thing keeps coming out clear to me when I interact with people who are unpleasant, negative, and and shitty is that's their issue. Whatever it is, I'm not responsible and I'm not going to take it personally. Some people, it seems like it's part of their nature to be uh, warring, to be oppositional. Other people, it's very obvious by the words they say is that they are clueless about who they are and about what's going on. And so they do this, they, you know, everybody else it's you 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 and um just like the recent incident that i told you about on my facebook page i just allow people to just keep speaking until they show their true selves it always comes out you know people's true mo motivations just keep talking it comes out you know there's no room for in, in, uh there's there's no need for intimidation and war in the world now we're not solving anything historically we can debate about how wars built things but we're at a point now where um, war is just for personal gain. Uh, it's not to help the people. I gotta keep saying this, okay? It's, uh, it's really important. It's really important, you know, it's... Uh, so, those are the <laughs> things on my mind. Um, I was playing Pink Floyd, I'll put it on the background. I'll probably get a I'll definitely get some advertising on my the front of my video because of this music. 
I noticed yesterday that for a minute, Google had put an ad on the beginning of my last video where I'm playing you my original music. I get up this morning and it appears that the ad is gone. Motherfuckers, that's my music. Okay, let me put an advertising on there thinking it's somebody else's music that, that's my music, bitches. Yeah, that's how good my music is, you think? <laughs> this is for um, Big Brother Google, Yahoo. Okay, that's for NSA, federal government. This is for all of you fucking monsters. I'll end on a high note. Music is fantastic. Music, well, actually, I'm gonna end. I'm just gonna end the way I end. I got some records here. Pink Floyd. This is an, an original tower. It's not a boot. Not a boot. This is an original American press. <laughs> not a boot. Um, I watched a documentary on Billy McKenzie and the Associates yesterday. Scottish band. Fantastic. Now this is an example of a voice that is just so good, there's no denying it. But the music, Associates music is was also lush and unusual. Sulk by Associates, a fantastic album, underrated. Yesterday was Jimmy Page's birthday. I didn't make a big deal out of it because I'm conflicted about my feelings about Jimmy Page. The whole Aleister Crowley, Satanist connection bothers me. Okay? So I pulled out some Roy Harper with Jimmy Page with him. But that Aleister Crowley shit bothers me. I had brain worlds out. Turns out that the, the Mason that I thought was Mason talking to me here is not Mason. See, I could, you know, some people might think I'm a complete ass and, and I sometimes I look like an ass, but that's life, okay? I'm here talking to the world like I know you and I don't. Um, I posted the, the video, then I linked it to Mason's Facebook page, and he said thanks. And then I come to find out, well, it wasn't Mason, but it, something good came out of it anyway. <laughs> Matching mole. Oh. Robert Wyatt. Oh. I had this out, Glenn Phillips Band. I haven't played it in a while, but I'm going to play it. I have it out. And then I was celebrating Bowie's birthday a few days ago, 76. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I keep forgetting to review this record or this music because, get a hold of me, friend, because it's like, it's pretty obvious it's not really what I'm about right now, okay? <laughs> get a hold of me if you really still want me to do the review, okay? I got other things on my mind, I really do. Sincerely looking forward to announcing um, my next record being on the way. It's should be coming in a couple of days.